What the flip is popping, Tim Nation? Welcome back to Sarah Sits in a Random Park, talks about her week and eats an egg McMuffin. I kind of want to like call it something. Maybe like McMuffin Meltdown? McMuffin Madness? McMuffin Monday! Oh my god, it's Monday! <laughs> Wait. First of all, I survived Hurricane Hillary. Woo woo! Girl, what the hell was that even? When I tell you guys, I was so stressed out about this hurricane for no reason. All last week, my For You page on TikTok was just all of these meteorologists being like, oh my God, if you live in LA, just get prepared because I'm a meteorologist. Hurricane Hillary is gonna come for y'all. Installing fear inside of me because I've never been in a hurricane before. Didn't even think it was possible to have a hurricane in LA. The last time there was a hurricane or like a tropical storm even was like 19. 1997. Oh my god, that was the year I was born. Maybe that was me coming out of my mom's womb. Because I was also born in LA. Well, Orange County. <laughs> in 1997, that was me. Before, before my mom got pregnant, I'm like, you guys got a big storm coming. Sarah Baska's coming to Earth. The up, tubers. No, but I think that that was the last time that there was something like this here. Sorry, guys. So I was scared. I was nervous. My mom was like, you need to get flashlights. You need to get gallons of water. She was like, you need to get... <laughs> Barb. She was like, you need to get a battery-powered radio. Get a mini grill that doesn't have to be plugged in. I'm like, what the hell are we doing, guys? What do you mean get a mini grill? Barb, relax. You're just bored. And then the storm did happen, and it was just raining with wind. It wasn't that deep. So yeah, it was very anticlimactic for me at least. I mean, I know other areas got flooded pretty bad. Now I have so many flashlights. I wanted to tell you guys about my Saturday night. This was like the calm before the storm. This was like the night before the big storm. Whoa, skewy. And I was laying in my bed at like 9 p.m. And I was like, hey, if I'm gonna die tomorrow or if I lose my apartment, might as well go out with a big bang, right? So me and Christelle went out. <laughs> Crazy. So I'm like pretty annoyed by something that happened on Saturday. I'm not like thinking about it or ruminating on it, but it was just something so incredibly irritating, unnecessary, rude. I almost got in a fight, but, but before I get started, we do have a sponsor. So take it away, Sarah. All right, y'all, today's sponsor is better help. Is it super hard for me to talk about my feelings? Yes. Because first of all, do I even want to talk about my feelings and what I'm actually going through and like all of these different patterns in my mind? I don't really want to think about it. But then again, that's not healthy. And it's very, very important to get to the root of whatever you're going through in your life. And it's also very crucial that you feel comfortable enough with someone to actually like talk about those things or even like want to talk about those things because it can be very hard and very scary. Regardless if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety, or if you're just a human being with human emotions that's going through a hard time right now. Therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard. And especially when you're limited to the options in your area. And BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online. It's also remote and all you have to do is fill out a few questions. And BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in just as little as a few days. And y'all, it's super easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. And if you guys are interested, you can just go to my description, click that link. It's betterhelp.com slash Sarabaska. Super easy. And if you click that link, not only are you supporting my channel, but you also get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. If you don't really vibe with your therapist, if it's not a match for you, which is a very common thing in therapy, it takes a second to figure out who really is helping you. You can easily switch to a new therapist at any time with no additional cost, no stressing about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. It's just a simple switch. So if any of you guys are struggling and you wanna get started, again, click the link in my description or go to betterhelp.com slash Sarabaska. And thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. Let's get back into it. So basically, Christelle and I met up with our friends at this random club in Pasadena. 
I've never been to a club in Pasadena. Didn't even really know they existed. It was pretty popping. I was shocked. We get in there. We meet up with our friends. We're having a good time. Lots of sweaty bodies. Um, the security guards are really hot. As you guys know, security guards are my weakness. I don't know why. I think it's just like an authority thing. I think they're hot. Like, yes, tell me what to do, daddy. Oh, you need to check my purse? Go ahead, daddy. Oh, you need to verify that I'm 21? Sure, daddy. Oh, you're giving me access into this club? Thank you, daddy. I don't know, they're just hot <laughs> for no reason. And it's only security guards that I feel that way with. If we're talking about authority, I don't know why. I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna be in there dancing and you're just gonna be working while I'm dancing. And you're just out here keeping me safe. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, when the club closed, me and my friends looked at each other. We're like, okay, now what? We don't want to go home. We don't want to face the storm. The only Hillary I want to think about right now is Hillary Duff. And we should play that in the Uber. Can we continue tonight and blast come clean or metamorphosis? That entire album is fine. Please don't park next to me. And you're going to park next to me. <laughs> That's awesome. There are so many parking spots in this park. Just why? Why did you do that? And you're a man. Now I'm scared. Oh, he's getting out. Okay. Okay, cool. He's on the phone. He looks stressed. Why are you walking into this empty baseball field at 9.30 in the morning? Oh, he's unlocking the gate to get inside of the baseball field. Oh, now he's going into the porta potty Maybe he just really had to pee. Okay keeping my eye on that so anyway so we're like oh damn i guess time to go home time to face reality but then my friend goes wait a second there is another option there's this rave we can go to christelle and i look at each other intriguingly we're listening he goes but i'm gonna tell you guys it's it's pretty like it's a pretty authentic kind of sketchy vibe I was like, have you been there before? He goes, yes. But I'm not sure if it's gonna be your guys' vibe. Christelle and I are like, dude, we can hang. Like, we love raves. And he goes, but this isn't, these people don't mess around though. This is a very like hush, hush rave. But if you guys really wanna go, and we're like, yes, just take us there. Get me in a car, play some Hillary Duff and take me to this rave. I trust my friends. I know they would never take me anywhere where I would have to question my safety. So we're in this Uber, we pull up, we're walking through an alleyway. There was like five guys with us and we're in a big group. So I felt safe, I was fine. Then we see this like tarp and we see these security guards and they're checking bags. And I'm like, okay, this isn't like some sketchy party in a basement. Like there's security here. This is like a legit rave. They check our bags, check our IDs. After we pass them, we're waiting in this line. There's only like maybe 15 people in front of us. So we're like, okay, yeah, 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 we're gonna get in. And then my friend looks at us and goes, oh shit, I totally forgot. This is an invite only rave. And you can only get in if you got like these certain seven texts that they send you in a row, seven of them. And this specific number has to text you these texts in order in order to get in. And we were like, okay, well, we don't have those texts. Should we just call an Uber and go home? And he goes, I have the texts. Here's the dealio. Delete all the texts that you have with me. Change my name in your phone to Rave. <laughs> And I'm gonna send you these texts in order. So we're like, okay. So as we're in line, he's just sending us all of these texts. So we have it on our phone. We're like, all right, let's do this. We get to the front of the line. Christelle's in front of me. The guy at the front just looks at Christelle and goes, you got the invite? She was like, yes, sir. Shows him the texts. He looks at Christelle's phone, clicks the top where it says rave, the contact name. And then it goes into the contact info. And he's looking at it and he goes, that's not our number. Shoes are away. And she goes, uh, 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 uh. Our friends who actually got the texts, they already got in. And they thought that that was gonna work. So Christelle gets turned away. I'm behind Christelle, so I'm like, okay, obviously they're gonna do that with me too. I'm just gonna step aside. You caught us, guys. 
I didn't know it was that serious. I didn't know it was that exclusive. It honestly felt like we were at the Salty Spittoon. You know how SpongeBob could not get in and he was trying like every fucking way to manipulate the bouncer? That is how it felt. And it was honestly the same vibe as the Salty Spittoon. We could like kind of see inside and it looked lit. It was like an actual club. There was like cool lights everywhere, like laser beams and shit. We felt like losers. We were just outside of this club being like, damn, so our friends are in there. Should we just go home? And then our friends run out outside and they go oh my god you guys didn't get in and then the guy in the front like sees me and Christelle I think that he really respected the hustle and really respected us trying to manipulate the system I think he was kind of like okay that was clever they almost got me so they're like you guys can get in if you just pay 20 bucks and we were like oh 20 bucks though is it worth it like is it worth it and our friend was like you guys don't have to come like we don't even have to be here and I was like no I need to see what this is all about. You hyped it up. You made it seem very interesting and questionable. I need to see it. Okay, so I did move my car because I was sketched out by that guy. So we go up to the bouncer again. I was like, you know what, Christelle, it's on me. I'll pay for you. I'll cover you. Since I really want to see what's inside of this place so bad, like, I got you. So I go up to the guy. This is crucial to the story, okay? This is why I'm telling you this detail. I go up to the guy and I give him my credit card so I can pay for me and Christelle to enter this salty spittoon. He puts it in the little card reader and he goes decline sir what are you talking about i have enough money on that card swipe it again and i only brought that one card and my id because i had like a little tiny little purse with me i didn't need my whole wallet so i just brought that one card girl just swipe it again swipes it again decline i go what i'm embarrassed because my friends are like girl and i'm like i don't know why it's declining maybe it thinks that this is fraud because we're in this random fucking rave i go to my bank app and i'm trying to get into my account but it keeps saying like we're sorry the service is down right now like it wouldn't let me get into the app even if i needed to like transfer money around or whatever i couldn't get on the app i was like christelle could you just uh, could you use your card and i'll transfer you money right now on my phone and she goes yeah, yeah yeah that's fine so i was stressing i was like what the fuck is going on with this card christelle pays for us to get in and i'm like sorry girl i got you and i felt so cool walking into this place it was dark it was giving like euphoria. It's like if euphoria and Salty Spittoon, if they had a baby. The lights, the flashing, the laser, the strobes, the sketchiness of it being in a warehouse. All of these different people, some of them were na not naked, but mostly naked. It's a rave! We were on drugs. So many people were on drugs. Everyone was mostly our age, so there wasn't any like weird, older, creepy people that were alone. It just felt like this very tight knit community of extreme people. They have red solo cups. I was like, where am I? This is crazy. But as we were making our way to the dance floor, I have a sudden urge to pee. I was like, oh shit, my bladder is kind of pulsating. So I was like, Christelle, can you come with me? <laughs> I'm scared. This place is kind of intimidating. So she's like, okay, totally. So we're standing outside, we're waiting in line for these porta potties, right? It's a very tight, compact space. It's just like these line of porta potties. There's a lot of bitches going to the bathroom. And I'm on my phone trying to figure out like why I can't get into my bank. And I'm like annoyed. So I'm trying to get into the app. It's not working. Then a porta potty opens and Christelle's like, I'm gonna go in this one. Just wait for me out here. I go, okay, cool. So I'm waiting outside of her porta potty on my phone minding my business right i'm apple paying christelle and then all of a sudden i hear this deep man voice Ooh. and it's this guy and he's right in front of me and he goes coke you want coke you want some coke <sighs> so i hear that and i look up and i go no i'm good continue trying to figure out how to apple pay Christelle. <laughs> and this man, he keeps pressing me and he's with this other guy, very sketchy dudes, okay? And I'm by myself. There's other people around, but like, I'm vulnerable. But he goes, you sure? I got some good shit. I got some good shit. I can give you some right now. I can give you some right now. I just didn't even look up because I was just like, if I just don't react, they'll go away. He was not going away. And he just kept saying shit like, Come on, girl, come on, girl. I know you wanna do some coke. Come on, trust me. You've never had shit like this. You've never had shit like me. And I literally look up at him again and I go, I'm good. 
continue to my Apple Pay. And this dude, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, you guys. Ooh, when I tell, ooh. I'm on my phone and then this man, he goes, oh really, you really gonna give me that attitude? What's the attitude for? What's the attitude for? Why do you have an attitude? Why do you have an attitude? And I'm like, all I did was just look at him again and then look back down. And I don't know why that set this man off so bad. Take a hint, brother. I don't wanna do coke. I don't know you. I'm at this random kind of sketchy rave. <laughs> no, no, but I'm not gonna like, I don't want to get him even more riled up. Even though that I knew that there were security, there were like people and shit. I just was like, I'm not messing with this dude. This is crazy energy. He was just saying that I had an attitude. I have an attitude problem, all this shit. He was like, why don't you want my Coke? Why don't you want Coke? And I was like, I don't want Coke. I don't, I just told, and I was so calm. Can you leave me alone? Like, what are you doing, dude? And then, ah, oh, I go back on my phone, just being like, just ignore him, Sarah, just ignore him. Ooh, but my, ooh, ooh. I could feel like my face get hot and it was starting to like pulsate. This man is still in front of me. And his friend is like, man, don't pay, don't pay attention to this bitch. She's just a bitch. Like she's got an attitude. And then the first guy goes, the first guy goes, you know what, dumb bitch? The only reason why I offered you some coke, because I think that you could lose some weight, actually. I feel like you need some coke. You need to lose some weight, so. I think that coke would be really beneficial. That's the only reason I asked you. Wh what? What? He was trying to scrounge for something, like trying to like piss me off because I gave him an attitude because I didn't want his Coke. So he's like, oh, actually, 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 the only reason why you need Coke is because you need, yeah, you, can, you need to lose the Bruh, be so fucking for real right now. Oh, you got me. What? And I literally, when he said that, bro, I was trying so hard not to laugh, but I just knew that if I started laughing, that would piss him off even more. So I just looked at him and then went right back onto my phone. Ooh, but that, that pissed them off even more because I wasn't giving them a reaction. I wasn't saying shit. There's nothing to say. And then the other guy, the other guy sees me do that to his friend and he goes, you know what, bro? I don't think it's that actually. I don't think it's that. I think she just needs a nose job. Yeah. She's just got a fat nose and she just needs a nose job actually. <laughs> I was like, what? What? <laughs> what? I didn't say, I just looked at him too. Oh, actually, I don't think it's that bro. She's got a big nose. She needs a nose job. First of all, sir, that was a terrible insult because what does that have to do with me not wanting your cocaine? It didn't even make sense. That wasn't even a good joke. That was, <laughs> you guys are just looking for something to insult me by. And I looked so cute that night. I know I looked hot. I'm just like, you guys are so lame. Typical, like fragile ego of a man that like got rejected. Bro, if that's your way of like trying to flirt with me is ask if I want to do coke with you guys And if I say no, oh well actually you need to lose some weight. That's the only reason why I asked <laughs> Yeah You got an attitude problem and you have a big nose actually you should probably get some plastic surgery am I right? <laughs> right bro Big nose honk honk Look at that bitch. She's a clown. Get your nose fixed, am I right? Her nose is way too big to be doing cocaine anyway. <laughs> it would just fall right out because her nose is so fat. Fat nose. You a fatty. Everybody, look at that fat nose. <laughs> That's crazy. That's why she doesn't want to do coke. <laughs> she's insecure about her nose.
Oh my god, dude. It was the funniest shit. I wasn't even upset. It, because it was just so lame. It was just so lame. Those weren't even good insults, dude. They were scrounging for a reaction from me. And I gave them nothing. Do better. Do better. You guys are douchebags, but you also suck at being douchebags. Like, you're not good at it. Like, that was weak. That was so weak, dude. It was giving, like, hey, beautiful, can I get your number? No, sorry. Well, you're ugly anyway. I didn't even want your number. I was kidding. That was a joke. Okay. <laughs> like, be so fucking for real, dude. Like, these men are so pathetic. It would have been such a chill exchange if they asked me if I wanted to do coke with them or if I wanted any, and I was like, no, it's okay. Continue on my phone, and they were like, okay, no problem. Have a good night. Totally, that's just not our customer, bro. We'll get the next one. Hey, nothing personal. Well, you should lose some weight, actually. That's the only reason. Girl. No, bro, it's not that. Her nose is too big for our shit. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was crazy. And that was my first interaction with the people here. I was like, oh, so it's gonna be like this. These people, okay. That was such an interesting vibe. I know they weren't gonna do shit. I know they weren't gonna like do anything. I didn't feel like scared by them, even though like anything can happen, obviously, and I'm always on my guard and shit. These guys were just so lame, losers, dweebs, scum. And we had to go through like metal detect, like I know I wasn't gonna get hurt. We were already like in the air, so I'm like, mm, okay. And as they were walking away, they were like, fucking bitch, fucking bitch. Big nose bitch, fucking bitch. And then one of the guys was like, she's not even worth it, bro. She's not even worth it, bro. This bitch got an attitude for no fucking reason. Not worth it, bro. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I'm not worth what? Selling cocaine to that I told you I didn't want in the first place? Like, what is your goal here? I truly don't understand. And since I wasn't giving them a reaction, it's not like I was fighting with them. It was such a one-sided fight and beef. <laughs> That's why it was so funny. You guys are literally yelling at nothing and no one. You guys pretty much should be yelling at this fence <laughs> that I'm standing in front of. Because why are you still in front of me? Insulting me <laughs> or trying to. And I feel like if this was me a few years ago when I was like insecure, I would have listened to them and probably cried later. It was just very interesting like after they walked away and I felt so self-regulated and I felt nothing. And I was like, damn Sarah, that's growth. I just needed y'all to hear it. Cause like what? <laughs> That was so funny. And then Christelle came out of the porta potty and I was like, did you just hear that? And she was like, no, what happened? And I was like, bruh, you just missed a show. It felt like I was in like a Key and Peele skit, like an SNL skit or something. I was like, that was not real. Like, And I told her and she was like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm so sorry. And I was like, girl, I don't give a, f like, it was just pathetic. It was sad. It was sad for them because they got so triggered for no reason. And she like told our friends and they're like, are you okay? I was like, guys, guys, like that was like a random minor disturbance on my night, but I'm not, I'm not tripping. Like, don't worry. They're just lame loser losers. Don't worry about it. I just thought that was really funny. And then, yeah, I let that shit go. And I just had a really great night in this random warehouse with a lot of sweaty people on drugs. We weren't, I had one beer. I had one beer that entire time. Just because like, since I didn't know this place, I was kind of like feeling out the energy. I didn't want to get drunk, so. It was interesting just observing, but it, I had a blast. We had a blast. They were playing a lot of us, 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 us. Music, like a lot of just consistent beats with not a lot of switch ups. So I was doing a lot of like, I, I was trying to practice my isolation, especially with like consistent beats. I like really was trying to make it crisp. That was great practice for me. And I think that that place was was open till like six in the morning. Like it went on for so long, but at like four in the morning, we were like, we should probably go. Cause around four is when the freak started coming and we we're like, yeah, let's just go home. That was fun though. And I just love when men try to attempt hurting my feelings, you know? You tried. I see what you were going for. You can't even insult women correctly, which by the vibe, I'm sure you do multiple times daily and you still suck at that. You still suck at that. <laughs>
That's sad. Whatever you guys are trying to communicate with me, we're not connecting. Can I release my body fluids? Which is why I'm in this line. And girl, even if I did want to do coke, what makes you think I would want to do coke at the Salty Spittoon with you? Y'all aren't even cute. They were not cute. They were not even attractive. The audacity. The audacity. Hey, what makes you ever think that I would want to do cocaine with you guys? With you guys? Delusional. So yeah, then I went home and I went to bed and then I woke up to the hurricane and it was mid. <laughs> Hurricane Hillary, kind of mid. You know what, Hurricane Hillary? I think you actually have a big nose. So, Hillary just needs to lose weight. In other news, I did see Taylor Swift. That was cool. Caitlin invited me, she's a huge Swifty. She was like, Sarah, like I have a ticket for you. Like just come to the show with me, you'll appreciate the show. And I'm open to it, you know, I'm not, I don't know the majority of her music, I'll be honest. I know a few songs, especially like the songs that have played on the radio and like her hits and stuff. And I think she's very talented and I really respect her writing. I think her writing is gorgeous. And I really appreciate and respect how vulnerable she gets in her music. I've always thought that. It's not my type of style of music though. Like I never just think to put her on in the car, but I do appreciate her shit, you know? I appreciate her as a person. And when I do hear one of her songs play, I'm just, I, I, can, I can get with it, you know? So I went to this show and I was ready to, you know, really understand the Swifties and be there and understand why everyone's obsessed with her and why she's the number one, she's like the number one artist in the world, correct? That's crazy. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna feel a little bit out of place tonight, but I still wanna go anyway and be a part of this moment because this is history, correct? Like the Eras tour, like if you were at the Eras tour, if you got a ticket to that shit, like that is a part of history. It was very, very cool to be a part of it. Really thankful I got to be there. The only problem was, is our tickets were standing. It was like GA, no seats in this one section, like above the 100 level. I don't even know how to describe it, but there was like this section that wrapped all the way around where you could only stand. And there was a lot of people that had those tickets. So basically I couldn't really see the entire time. Um, just cause there was a lot of people in that section. We even walked all the way around the stadium just to like try to like find some space cause we couldn't see. But I was peeking through people's shoulders and heads. Like I was getting some glimpses, you know, and it was very long. It was kind of a chore just to see the stage. So I feel like if I had an actual seat and saw the whole stage and saw the entire production the entire time, I feel like I would have appreciated it more. I did appreciate it. I thought it was really cool. I think she slayed. I think she looked beautiful. Even though I didn't know most of the songs and I felt very out of place when everyone was screaming the lyrics. It was really cool to people watch though, I will say that. Since I couldn't really see her, I was watching a lot of the Swifties bond and like cry and it was really beautiful, it was really sweet. Beautiful community Swifties. I love it, I love it. I wouldn't say I'm a Swifty yet. I feel like I can get there. I feel like if I had an actual seat, it would have been easier for me to like get in it. But I respect it. I had a good time. I shaked my ass. I shook it off. I did indeed shake it off. So yeah, that was cute. That was a cute experience. Next time she goes on tour, I'm gonna make it a priority to have actual seats. So yeah, that's basically everything. I know this video was pretty rando. I don't know, I just like sitting in my car and venting and screaming. It's fun. Well, I eat a McMuffin. McMuffin Mondays. Do you guys like McMuffin Monday? Even though it's not Monday, probably when you're watching this. Do you like McMuffin? What was the other one? Oh, McMuffin Meltdown. I feel like McMuffin Meltdown's a good one too. I think I'm gonna do that, McMuffin Meltdown. Thank you guys for watching another episode of McMuffin Meltdown. McMuffin Motel. Thank you guys for staying at the McMuffin Motel. 
No, that's so dumb. The McMuffin Massacre? <laughs> McMuffin magic. Comment down below what it should be. I don't fuck it. I kind of, I really do enjoy McMuffin meltdown. I feel like that kind of fits. I'm going to San Diego tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. I'm seeing Tosh Sultana. I'm so excited. The venue's really sick too. It's like right on the water. Oh, I can't wait. Ooh! And then I'm going to Oregon later this month for my bestie Katie's birthday. Woo, 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 woo. She's pregnant again with a little girl. And I can't wait to see her pregnant ass. So that's gonna be really fun. I'll try to record what I can. I don't really like taking my phone out and recording while I'm home hanging out with loved ones, but I'll definitely talk about it and share what I have. It's gonna be nice just being back in Oregon for a little bit. It's gonna be a nice reset, so. Yeah, love you guys so much. Have a great rest of your August and I'll see you soon.